Today, we're going to be recapping the Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 3, Episode 6. The next episode, Episode 7, will be the semifinals. That's super exciting. Let's get started. All right, the first model is Sean Phillips. There she is. She's known from um, British drama. She's an actress. And I remember her from I, Claudius, which was an awfully long time ago. But boy, she played an evil character that was unforgettable. This is four hours as later. The three artists are painting her. They turn their easels around, and we can see the results. So this is the first one. This one I find really, really interesting because it's so seldom that someone paints a portrait kind of like a mugshot, you know, flat on like that. Um, the other thing that I find interesting about it is that, um, well, I guess that they treated the wrinkles. I, I tend to ignore wrinkles and look for shapes. I find the wrinkles don't add to the to the painting at all and, and kind of wish they hadn't been there. I think there were shapes there that could have been discovered instead because, of course, wrinkles cause a little bit of shadowing and, and whatnot. This is the next one. This reminds me an awful lot of, say, Vincent van Gogh or, or um, Paul Cezanne. It's incredi incredibly linear. It certainly is accurate. It looks a lot like her. I'm not so sure the last one looked a lot like her. Uh, I, can you imagine it without that orange background? I mean, that orange background really sells it. But I think it's beautifully done, and it definitely fulfills the brief of looking like the sitter. And I've thought about that and talked to other artists about this program, and, and we all feel very strongly that it's not enough to do a, just a portrait. It has to resemble the model to some degree. This is the next one, which is unusual to have two separate canvases, one black and white on the far right, which only has a piece of, uh, <laughs> of her, and then the part that's colored. But boy, is it accurate. And so um, I think this might have been, probably would have been my choice. It's just expertly, expertly done. So she has a, gets to choose which one she's going to take home with her. This has nothing to do with the judging of the episode, just which one does she want to take home with her. And this is the one she chose. And I agree with her. The other thing that I really liked about this is that the format of this painting is a very long rectangle, which it sometimes it's just interesting to mix things up and have a different format than what you usually have. So now we'll go on to the next model. The next model is Adrian Childs. He is a broadcaster. And they put stones, which is like a wallpaper, behind him because I guess he's carried a stone with him from the beach, like, since he was four or five years old, and uh, and they knew about that. So that's kind of interesting. Here we are four hours later. The easels are being turned around, and he gets to see his first look at the paintings and which one he'll decide to take home. So the first one up is a very fine painting, but it does not look like him at all. Clearly, I, I think anybody can see that the bottom part of his face is is very distorted, I I kind of don't have an explanation for that. Surely along the way, the artist must have seen that this was happening. you got to walk away from the easel and, and look back. But uh, other than that, it's a fine painting. Uh, this is done with charcoal and pencil. This person, uh, just fantastic ability to draw. It was fascinating to watch him grid everything out and then go ahead and, and paint with su uh, paint, uh, draw with such accuracy and confidence. It has a strong confidence, don't you think? And it certainly looks like him. There's no question about that. Very strong resemblance to him. This is the third one, which I really enjoy for the coloration. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I'm always partial to color. The colors are not chalky. Uh, even though they're light, they're um, they're still quite, um, they have an intensity to them. So I think that was very nicely done. So let's see which one he picks. I thought he was going to pick the drawing, but he didn't. He picked this one. So this one will go home with Phil, with Adrian. All right, the next one up is Phil Davis. Phil Davis always plays evil characters. And so <laughs> whenever I see him, my stomach gets a little tight because... He makes me nervous. I'm sure he's an absolutely lovely man. So this is four hours into the program. 
the artists turn their easels around and we get to see the first look and see which one Phil is going to choose. This is the first one up. I don't think it has a resemblance to Phil in any way at all. It's very expressive and um, you know, that, I guess that's the most I can say about it. This person certainly knows how to make volume and how to make forms, but I really think it's important that it resemble the subject to some extent, and it just does not. The next one definitely does resemble Phil quite a bit. I think it's got a lot of accuracy when it comes to that, but the actual painting itself is a little bit, um, I'm going to go ahead and say flat. Now, that's going to sound odd because we've had a previous contestant here who had a pretty flat painting, but this is just blended to such an extent that you don't see changes in the color very much, and I like to see different colors in the skin, some blues, some greens, something else other than just uh, tones of orange or, or red if you're Caucasian. This is the third one that Phil has to choose from. I do think this has a strong resemblance to him, at least as he appeared in that, this program. The more I look at it, maybe the less I'm convinced of the resemblance, but it's a little hard to tell. Maybe we'll see it again later. This is a classically trained artist. You can tell just by the by the way that they decided to uh, have the format and the colors chosen for the palette. It's sort of timeless in that way. So let's see which one Phil decides to take home with him. All right, here's the one that Phil is going to take home with him. And this is the one I would have chosen just because uh, from this is particular section because I just thought this was the best of the paintings. It's a it's a super fine painting for sure. Love the lost and fa lost edges on the left hand side. Now we get to the semi finalists. This is when the artists, I mean when the judges pick three people uh, from the field that we just saw, and three of them will be considered for going on as to the next section. Only one will be chosen. I'm sorry, I was clumsy about saying all that. So here's the first one that they chose as a semi-finalist for this particular episode. Uh, I don't disagree at all, and you know I often do disagree with the judges. The second one is this one, the charcoal drawing. I agreed. Uh, they're going to have a tough time because I think all three of these are very, very strong. I don't know which one I would have picked. And this one, I would say this one probably has the strongest resemblance of all the paintings to the actual subject there. But um, but the, the charcoal drawing does as well. Now what they're doing this year they haven't done in previous years is they're showing the submission piece. To be on the program you have to submit a digital portrait of yourself and... From there, they choose whether or not you can be on the program. And so here's the person who did Phil's, uh, was it Phil? No, Adrian, uh, and her self-portrait. You can see that she uses the same kind of coloration and technique in her own portrait. But I'm sure there's a vast difference between the four hours she, had, she spent on the left and the, the time she spent on the right. The more I look at the one on the left, ooh, I wish she hadn't put those pebbles in. I don't like that. Wow. Now, the, here's the, uh, I have to say, the, the drawing of, for the submission of the self-portrait was, I mean, it looks so much like him, he could just walk out of that piece of paper. It was really amazing. So again, we ca can see a consistent style, and we can also see that uh, there is a difference in terms of detail when he has four hours to work and when he has unlimited time. And the last one, the last one, really blew me away and I thought, oh my gosh, this guy, he's going to win the whole thing. I was convinced he would win the whole thing. I mean, he did a great job in the four hours that he had and also did something different in splitting the, the um, subject up into two canvases. His submission piece is like something we haven't seen before. I mean, how could he not be the winner of this particular episode and probably the winner of the program? But hashtag Joe is almost always wrong when it comes to this program. Let's see who the winner is. Dun, 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 dun. This is the winner. The winner going forward is this very excellent uh, artist who has great drawing skills. So the next is the semifinals. We will have seven people from each one of the... Uh, uh, seven, meaning one from each one of the previous episodes, and they will paint one model, and then will be judged. So... Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint wet. Stay tuned for the next episode because I think it's the one that's the most exciting. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.